So Microsoft has just released two awesome functions that produce pivot table like results, which are the group by and the pivot by functions. And unlike pivot tables, when your data source gets updated, you don't need to do a refresh like pivot tables in order for the results to get updated because the results just get updated instantly with these functions. In this video, we'll take a deep dive into these functions and examine them from different angles. And we're starting right now. All right, so starting with the group by function. The group by function can give you a grouped table for your data. So just like a pivot table, but with only fields in the rows area and the values area. You can also add a filter, which we will show as well. So for example, if I need to create a pivot table like this one using the group by function, so equals group by, and the first input is the row fields, which is similar to putting a field in the rows area of the pivot table. So to mimic this pivot table, we're going to put the product category column in the rows area. And you need to make sure to give it the column, including the column header. So I'm giving it the whole column. As you can see here, I have an Excel table, so I'm getting structured references. And then the values is what you're gonna put in the values area of the pivot table. In this case, it's gonna be the sales amount column, and it's gonna be also including the column header. It's very important to include the column header. And if your data is not in an Excel table and it's just normal cell references instead of structured references, it's gonna work without any problems as well. And then the third input we have here is the function. So this is basically what kind of aggregation you need to do to your numbers. So do you wanna sum them? You could also, if you have text in the values area, then you could count A, the text, or you could do array to text, which is basically listing the values in the values area. And we're gonna show that shortly. So in this case, we're gonna just choose sum. And these are the basic inputs that you need to give to the group by function. These are the mandatory inputs and they don't have any square brackets around them, as you can see here. But then the rest of the inputs have square brackets around them, which means that they are optional, but we're gonna show how they work shortly as well. Now let's close the bracket here and press enter. And as you can notice, we get a basic pivot table, just like we have in this one, where we have the product category in the rows area, and we have the sales amount in the summation of values area. All right, so let's examine the rest of the inputs for the group by function. So the field headers, this input is basically Excel asking us, does your data have headers or not? So we could answer, hey, my data does not have any headers and watch what's gonna happen here. If we choose zero, which is no, you're gonna see the header for the product category here as part of the table because it's considered it not a header, it's considered it an item, that there is an item just like accessories and computer and mobile that is called product category, but it has zero sales, of course, because this is actually not an item, this is the table header. And then we have yes, but do not show, which basically is us telling Excel, yes, I do have headers, but don't show them. So this is the result that you get. We don't get the headers shown. And then we have here no, but generate. And this is going to make Excel actually generate an ugly header called row field one. And you can see here as well that we have the product category included as an item instead of being a header because we told Excel, hey, we don't have any headers. So it's considered the product category, which is the header as an item. And then we have yes and show. So, hey, I do have headers and please show them. And this is what you get here. You get your header shown and you also get your items and you get a, a grand total as well. And for some reason, there is no header as well for the field that we put in the values area or for the field that we're summing here. In this case, it's the sales amount. So there is no header here that says sales amount or sum of sales amount or something of that sort, because we're also not able to type in this cell here because this is a dynamic array function. So we're not able to type here without causing a spill error. As you see in a dynamic array function, the formula only exists in the first cell and then the other cell cells are not cells that contain formulas and you can't type in them. Otherwise you'll cause a spill error as we saw. So maybe this can be improved somehow in the future. 
Now, what if we need to have our product categories broken down by products? So we would have multiple levels of grouping. In this case, if we replace the product category here with a contiguous range of the product and the product category and press enter, you can see here that we don't have the product category broken down by the product, but rather actually the product broken down by the product category, which doesn't make sense because in a product hierarchy, the category is at the top and then you would break it down by the product. So in this case, we'll use the H stack function in order to create the stack that we want to stack the arrays for the product category and then the product the way that we want them. And this is what you would need to do as well if you want to stack non-contiguous columns. So for example, if you want to stack the product category and the vendor in that particular order, then you would need to use the H stack function. And the H stack function can basically stack two arrays horizontally. So if you use the H stack function here with this product category array and then this region array, for example, you'll see here that you will get these two arrays stacked horizontally in this same order that you put them in the H stack function. So this is what we're going to do here. So if we use the H stack function and we would stack the product category and then comma add the second array to be the product column and then close all brackets and press enter, You'll see here that what we get is a grouping by the product category and then it would be broken down by the product here. And this is the sales amount for the product category broken down by the different products. And this leads us to the next input here, which is the total depth. So this total depth input controls whether you would have no totals at all in your table. So here you can see here that the total has disappeared or whether you would have grand totals only, which is what we had previously, as you can see here, just a grand total or that you would have grand totals and subtotals. So you'll see here that now we will have subtotals for the different categories. And you could also have the grand totals at the top instead of being at the bottom. So this is what you get when you do that. And you could also have the grand totals and the subtotals to be at the top, which is kind of weird, but you can have it if this is what you want. All right, so now you can use the H stack function to stack your columns the way that you want them. And you can also control the grand totals and the subtotals using the total depth input. So the next input we're going to talk about is the sort order input. So this sort order input can help you control how your outputted table is sorted. So if we need to sort by the values of the sales amount, then we need to input three because the sales amount is column number three. So this is going to sort by the sales amount in ascending order, which is probably not what you want to do. You probably want to sort the values here if they are sales, you'd probably want to sort them in a descending order. So in this case, you can input negative three and this will sort your sales in a descending order. So if you input a negative number, this will sort by descending order. And if you input a positive number, then this is gonna sort in an ascending order. Also, you should be able to sort by multiple columns. So you should be able to sort by the sales, for example, in a descending order and then the product in an ascending order. If you put that inside curly brackets. So if you say that you want to sort the sales in a descending order by putting negative three and then a comma here, and then you put two for sorting the product in an ascending order. This should work, or at least I've seen it work. I've seen the video for Minda Tracy from my online training hub, and she's done that and it's worked. But for some reason on my system, it doesn't work. I'm not sure why this might be a bug because the function has been released recently and is still in the beta channel. Channel, so this might be fixed in the future, but for now it doesn't work for me. All right, so the last input that we have for the group by function is the filter array. And the filter array enables us to filter our output by certain criteria. So I could say, for example, that the product category, and I need to give it the whole column, including the headers, is not equal to accessories.
and you can see here that now we don't have the accessories in the results now let me show you a cool trick for showing text in the values area of your table so for example if we use the group by function here and we would put the product category here in the row fields and then for the values we use the products because we want to show the products that are under each category and then for the function we need to choose what is called array to text text and this will show us the products under each category in an array like this separated by commas but as you can see here there is a small problem with that which is that the products are repeated as you can see here so we have the products being repeated we don't have the unique products under each category so in order to fix that we need to use a custom function so instead of using the built-in array to text function we'll need to use a lambda function so use a lambda function so a lambda is basically a custom function that you can ask to do whatever you want so we'll give it a variable which is x and then we can use the array to text function and we can use that on the unique values of x so now if we close lambda and we press enter here you can see here that we get the unique values of the products under each category and this is actually very powerful because it's not usually possible in pivot tables unless you use power pivot and dax and i've explained how to do it using power pivot and dax or using the concatenate x function in dax in a previous video that i made and i'll leave you the link for that video down below in the description and you can also add one more touch to that which is that you can sort the data as well so you can have your products here sorted as well so this is a cool trick if you need to have text in your values area and if you need to get the number of products so the unique number of products under each category instead of the actual products then instead of the array to text function you can use the count a function to do that so if you press enter you can see here that we get the unique number of products under each category as well and this is also something that you can't do in pivot tables which is getting the unique count of items now we'll move on to the pivot by function but before i start explaining the pivot by function if you're enjoying the video i'd really appreciate if you could give it a like and make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified with all of our future videos and for the pivot by function it actually has the same inputs as the group by function it just has some extra inputs but they work exactly the same so here we have a pivot table but we don't have fields only in the rows area but we also have fields in the columns area so the pivot by function has the column fields input which basically enables you to have fields across the columns just like a pivot table so here if we need to replicate this pivot table using the pivot by function we'll put the product category here in the row fields input and then for the column fields we will put the region field and then for the values area we'll put the sales amount and then for the function it's going to be the sum function and let's close the brackets and press enter and you can see here that we managed to replicate this pivot table here and it has your region regions across the columns and the product category across the rows now let me show you the row sort order input so i've created here a pivot table where i put two different fields in the row fields area which are the product category and the product using the h stack function just like we did on the group by function so if we go to the row sort order input we can sort by the fields in our rows area or the row field input here so for example i can sort by the product in a descending order so if i put negative two because the product is the second field added to the row fields input or in the rows area and if i put negative two and press enter you can see here that now my data is sorted by the product in a descending order i could also do a sorting by the product category as well in the descending order if i add some curly brackets and if i add negative one here so negative one is for the product category because the product category is the first field in the rows area here so if i put negative one for the product category and negative two for the product here between curly brackets and press enter you can see here that now the products are sorted by the product category in a descending order and by the product as well in a descending order 
and for some reason sorting by multiple fields works here on the pivot by function but it doesn't work on the group by function but I think this should be fixed in the near future and then the other inputs that we have are actually easy to understand so the column total depth will control the totals and subtotals for the fields in the columns area and then the column sort order will control the sorting for the fields in the columns area and then the filter array will filter your pivot table just like we saw on the group group by function so I don't want the video to be much longer so I won't be explaining them because we've already explained that on the group by function all right so that's it for explaining the group by and the pivot by functions I think they are a great extra option that we have in excel but I don't think that they are a replacement for pivot tables because pivot tables have better performance when it comes to data that has lots of rows thousands or even millions of rows and pivot tables also work with power pivot and DAX and enable you to do complex calculations using DAX formulas which by by the way if you're interested to learn more about power pivot and dax i have a video that introduces power pivot and dax in excel and i'll leave you the link down below in the description and i also have a full course for excel power pivot for beginners and i'll leave you the link down below in the description with a special discount as well so let me know what you think of the group by and the pivot by functions i'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments so leave me a comment below and let me know what you think about these functions and by the way these functions are currently available only for microsoft 365 users that are part of the insider program and the beta channel i'll leave you a link down below in the description on how to sign up for the insider program and be part of the beta channel in order to get these functions early as i got them all right guys so if you found this video helpful i'd appreciate if you could give it a like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified with all future videos and please make sure to also follow us on social media i'll leave you the link down below in the description thank you so much for watching and i'll see you on the next video